Hey, what's going on everyone? Hanaris here with a super awesome unboxing video. Today we're going to be showing off the Kingston HyperX SSD. This is a 120 gigabyte storage solution and oh man, it is one of the fastest hard drives I have used in a long, long time. Way faster than putting a ferret in your machine and telling it to take your data across the motherboard. So what we are going to do today for this video is basically open the box, check out the contents, and see about installing this bad boy and running it through the test ringer. So with that Without further ado, let's begin. After just very quickly removing the contents of the package and placing them on the counter, we can see it comes with an instruction manual. We also have here a box, which I will show you some of the fine print up close. Read time, 525 megabytes a second. Write time, 480 megabytes a second. And down here at the bottom half, we'll try to show you some of this finer uh, finer print here. Sandforce driven, 24-7 tech support, and of course it does have a warranty on it. Looks like it is three years. So heading to the back of the box, if I can flip this around, we see basically it says boots faster and loads applications quicker, increases endurance and reliability. And then down at the bottom, it also has the package contents, which basically one SSD and one mounting bracket with some screws. So now we're going to be moving directly on to the actual SSD itself. You'll notice it is enclosed in a very, very nice little packaging unit. Up close, it is quite shiny, very, very small. That's one of the things you'll notice about this extremely small form factor. So this is a very, very fast drive, very compact, very, it's, it's excellent for putting things like your operating system on it. You can see it is indeed a SATA piece of hardware. And uh, moving along down towards the back, we can flip this over and see that the mounting bracket is attached on the other side. This is meant to allow access uh, for computers that have three and a half inch drive bay slots. Those platter hard drives that we've been using for so long, this adapter will help this two and a half inch drive fit into that mounting scheme. So we lastly do have the uh, the manual here, which I will try to fumble with and maybe get open. It is pretty big, but that is only because it comes with so many languages. For any one language, the instructions are actually pretty small. And you can see the graphics located up in the top left of the paper. Very simple to install. It tells you both about uh, laptop and PC installation. So now let's go on and see about installing this bad boy into the computer. Do note that the package does contain four screws, which can be used to attach the SSD to the mounting bracket through the holes shown here in the video. So once it is actually attached, which I will show you right here super quick, how it does also have the screw holes on the side of the drive, we're going to put it into the external drive enclosure that I have pulled out from my computer here. So it very easily slides into the three and a half mounting bracket. And yes, my computer uh, holder does have a little bit of dust here. It is because it has been alone for so long without a drive companion, but now how how much better of a companion can you actually get than a Kingston HyperX SSD? You see it fits oh so perfectly in here, and all that is left is simply to screw the, uh, or attach the hard drive in with the screws that came with my case. Very simple. So now let's go on to actually running some tests with the hard drive installed, and we'll see how it performs with rendering and other kind of sort of uh, analysis of the help files that come with it, etc. Okay. Now that the drive is installed in our machine, we're going to be taking a look at the instruction manual. This is available online and uh, pretty simple to find. You can just go to kingston.com support and make your way through the menus to the SSD Now section, or you can just copy the link up there in the top of the screen. Either way will work. But for now, let's click on the US flag, and it takes you directly to the English portion of the installation. And it goes over information like, uh, you could see boot priority, handling precautions, system requirements, tools needed, what's available in the kit, all that cool stuff. So we've already gone ahead and installed it on this machine, so we're going to just minimize this. And this is going to bring us to one of the things that I want to test. But first, before we do that, we actually have to initialize the drive. So to do that, we're going to go here, disk, management, ta-da! And this is something you will very likely have to do on your machine as well. So we find the disk. Here it is, disk 2. I'm going to right click it, new simple volume, go through the wizard, give it a drive letter. E is going to be fine. Format it, and do a quick format. Yeah, there's nothing on there. So we're just going to confirm and finish. So it's going to think for just a second, and bam, there we go. So now, 
Notice how I had that uh, this window up here in the background? See how it pops up? Now it recognizes new volume. So we're just going to change the properties to HyperX. So there we go. Makes it sound all speedy. Moving forward with the video, we're going to be taking a look at how the hard drive deals with rendering. Now, rendering is something that I, as a StarCraft II commentator, need to do with my raw video footage that I collect using a third-party program. The This footage is basically broken down into several extremely large files, four gigabyte files a piece, which you could see total up to about 10 minutes and 50 seconds worth of footage over 23.2 gigabytes. So. Between this video and the last one, I moved over these files from a recent broadcast, and I'm going to move them into Sony Vegas, and we're going to determine about how long it takes to render and see if the hard drive affects the performance. Now, going into this, I expect it to affect it some, maybe not a ton, as it still is pretty reliant on the CPU and other, uh, other aspects of the computer. But I know that when I, re when I rendered this video using my typical platter drive, it took between I think 15 and 20 minutes about so let's see if uh, let's see if Vegas is able to speed it up now with the files on the SSD so the uh, files are located there we're gonna click render as we're gonna set it as a typical 720 resolution mp4 have it saved to the drive and we're just going to let this uh, you know give us the approximate time left there it should, like I said, be somewhere between 15 to 20, according to the platter, but we'll wait and see if there's an improvement or if it stays relatively same. I'm really looking forward to this, actually, because as a caster, anything I can do to minimize the amount of time that I've got to be processing these videos is going to be super helpful for me. And, uh, you know, likewise, I've also got some benchmarks up here that we can just take a quick look at while, uh, while that goes. And it looks like it is going to settle in at 12 minutes and 53 seconds. So that is a little bit of an increase. I'd say about 10%, 15% or so. That's, I mean, hey, again, every little bit helps. And uh, knocking 5, 10 minutes off, that's, yeah, it's good stuff. So we're going to cancel that. And we're going to now minimize this and open up comparison. Now, these are the two, uh, two files that I have created using a benchmark program, which you could see right here. We'll just uh, use a little selection tool. Bam! Right there. So, you can take a look here. This is the SSD and the benchmarks. You could see as we increase the file size, this is 512K, 1 meg, 2 meg, 4 meg, 8, all the way down to 8 gig. And here's the transfer rate. So you see it clocked in, read, write, eh, kind of borderline, borderline 350, 400, etc. This is pretty much to be expected considering the system setup that I have right here. But keep in mind that a platter hard drive is a lot slower. So here we go right here with this is my main hard drive. It's the C drive, 160 gigabytes. It's the closest one I had in size to the, the 120 SSD over here. And notice how the trend, same uh, same file size, but look down here, the transfer rate. And now compare it over here. That is a massive leap in performance. So that alone just blows my mind. Definitely amazing stuff that is being done with this technology. So if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to check out the benchmarking program again, if you buy your own drive. You can, again, just use this one. Settings are pretty much default. So that's pretty much all I have for this video. I, again, just want to thank you for participating in this. Hopefully, uh, you know, if you find that the product is right for you, you can go check it out. Visit kingston.com where you may even be seeing this video. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you have as good of a time with your SSD as I do. Thank you for Kingston from, thank you to Kingston, rather, for making this wonderful product. And we'll see you in the next video.